and it's live. Hey, Artharen's right on time, as always. <laughs> we love our Artharen. <laughs> what you really have to you appreciate, ultimately, ultimately, what you have to appreciate is, like, taking the time to, uh, like, not type it into Discord chat, but have it ready to copy and paste so no one knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Jack. Hi, Jelly Bean. Yay, I'm glad you can join us during your lunch Just break. Just sitting there. Waiting for the uh, the stream to kick in. Control V enter. Done. That's how you <laughs> What's up, beautiful people? We are getting ready. A little bit of a pre-show before we do a weekly, daily Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Pedro decided to join us. That was sweet of him. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have been distracted playing video games <laughs> bad video games at that <laughs> i kind of think um mm -hmm. at, at least you had something yes. near you for a notification <laughs> which i've made a point out of uh doing <laughs> they just like matt i didn't get a notification where are you directly in front of my computer <laughs> yes, yes, that was. <laughs> but I didn't have a clock visible. <laughs> I think I need to put one on this monitor somewhere. <laughs> do what I do, man. Put an extra tablet on the table somewhere, <laughs> on a stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that Nori has the uh, Samsung tablet, I have the extra shield. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm in here, I use it as a Discord monitor or any notification. I'm like, oh, look, Blasphemous. I think that mm -hmm. Hi, Scott. I see you in audio. Yeah, Blasphemous. Blas? What is it? Blasphemous? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Blasphemous. Hi, Scott. Mm -hmm. We're going to live. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Oh, love it. <laughs> oh, Artharen. Artharen, thank you for all your uh, stories too. You've, um, you know, put in our show notes. Uh, some of those I'll include next week because we just had so many good stories land this last week. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got to like, go at seven minutes. Okay. Yes. But yeah, I'm very, very, very glad that Blasphemous is finally having its um, Linux release. Took their sweet time with that one. <laughs> when are they going to have it, man? I saw that it was like 50% off, and I'm like, oh, do you got it? No, you don't. Well, September 3rd. Yeah. <laughs> well, tough. So give you this is going to be another month. Yeah. <laughs> It's like half off. Uh, I don't know if I really want the game, but you know what? I'll give you. No, I won't. Nope. No money for you. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be another month, and apparently they were having issues with the game, and I ran into a few of them, to be fair. Well, it's you. <laughs> They did. Uh, they did have the Linux build already on Steam, but it wasn't a different branch. And yeah, it had issues. Like uh, when it first released, uh, if you took the third uh, health boost from the uh, NPC, that the topless NPC that gives you the uh, the health boosts, the game uh, would stop registering your inputs. You couldn't move anymore. That was a pain in the but <laughs> I mean, think about it though, man. <laughs> Extra challenge. It's hard now. Hey, I made it all the way almost to the end of the game without it. <laughs> What's the game everyone's playing now? The little jelly looking game multiplayer. Oh, uh, Foxy was talking about it. <laughs> you know the game. You, you look at all your Twitch subs and it's that mm -hmm. one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like gang beasts, but yeah, it's, yeah. um... Uh, Arthur, and you were paying attention to what Foxy was saying. <laughs> what did he say the name of the game was? 
Fall Guys. Fall Guys. It? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aunt Domus. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mm. Right on. It looks like a fun enough game. I mean, Strider is joining the GeForce now master race. Oh, he is, man. <laughs> he loves Nvidia. You think I'm an Nvidia shill? Got nothing on Strider, man. <laughs> Yeah, feel free uh, to like, politely hound them in their uh, forums. Be like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, I go to that Linux, uh, the Linux request thread that gets invaded by a bunch of insecure Windows users. It's like, you already have the game. Why do you want to gatekeep other operating systems from getting it? Because they're Windows <laughs> experts. They know how to click the next button very well. I, 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 I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> I am very insecure for some things. I am. But I don't get that. I, I really don't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the people I genuinely feel bad for, like right now, I knew this day was coming. I've definitely mentioned it. It's our brothers and sisters with Max. They've had a rough go of it. Do you think about it? Like, hey, at least we get Steam. That's great. Oh, Linux is getting... Oh, Linux can play all the Windows games? <laughs> Guys? Wait, Proton isn't coming to Mac? Then Apple's <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> too many options, really. We, 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 let's get everything over to ARM. Which I applaud them for. It's just going to be a rough, rough time. You can test control with RTX. Man, not only do you get to like rent an RTX card, but you also get mm -hmm. to rent a instance of Windows. So it's like win win. Yeah. It's a Windows VM. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can trick or treat any day of the week. You know, to be fair, that's still a better proposition than um, Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> As well, far as playing games goes, not as the technology goes, but as far as playing the games. By, by all accounts, <laughs> the technology is better with NVIDIA, but more more importantly, before any we get to any of that, is you don't have uh, fear of NVIDIA. It's like, hey, you know what we're doing tomorrow? What? Killing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because with any other company, you would go, what? How? What? Within Google, you'd go, eh, 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 <laughs> had a good run. Surprised it lasted that long, but okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, Google is uh, sending out class action notifications to users of Google Plus, which I was one. <laughs> which I can't register for because I'm not a U.S. resident. <laughs> or otherwise I would. I don't care about the five bucks. It was just for the principle of the thing. <laughs> well, I think one of the issues with Google is if the attention span of a gnat. <laughs> it's not shiny anymore. <laughs> What's shiny over there? It's new. Everyone love it. <laughs> And that marketing campaign and went on for about a week, then pff, radio silence. How about them games you promised, Google? Because <laughs> you currently have like eight or nine that people can buy in the store. <laughs> Everything else you have to subscribe to to get for free. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm free. sitting back. Oh, hi, Intel Graphics on Twitter who's following me for some reason. Um... Yeah, same here, Ben. <laughs> Bethesda Softworks was following me for a while. <laughs> I was just cleaning out Twitter yesterday, you know, and I was like, let's see, who's not posting anything interesting? And uh, 
I just saw it in like my followers thing. It's like, oh, followers you. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> then immediately, like, order the following like sixty thousand people. I'm like now, five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur and I got my penguin sippy cup again. So I do love it. Love it. It's so cute. <laughs> a lot of things together. I need to go fill up my big mug. My big boy mug. Yes. Yes. And we can get underway. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you playing Let's it out loud? <laughs> <laughs> I know you said you were going to Aww. try and listen to the Emma. show, but um <laughs> <laughs> I love Emma and we're talking about system seventy six today too. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a laptop. Or a really yeah. crazy, uh, super something powerful unique. desktop, mm -hmm. but something else, <laughs> which we already talked about on Saturday. But shh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got a little show and tell for that <laughs> segment. Something cool. <laughs> All right. Okay. So definitely, we have an eight out of ten and uh, <laughs> a confirmation from Arthurin. Very much appreciated. See if anyone else uh, manifests themselves when the um, the stream shows up on the tubes. But I have identified a, a specific bit of content that that game has that causes some crashes so oh. if we get to that i won't be playing that bit on stream i'll still play it but um it will be off stream and i will play another game also a fallout game but uh, it will be a bit of dlc that i also very much like so we're trading one dlc for another <laughs> Mm -hmm. Jitsi is um, pretty useful. Mostly because you just give someone a link and say, go there. Like, boom, done. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I was going to say Aunt Domus, but I think it's you and Domus. Oint Domus? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Welcome. Aunt Domus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm trying uh, to decipher the twitched. pronunciation of um, Aunt Domus. <laughs> Is that spelled with a capital four or mm -hmm. not? A capital <laughs> no, it's, E. It's spelled uh, with lower purple. Lowercase E. <laughs> it's spelled with purple. <laughs> <laughs> Romains. Remains. <laughs> Alright, okay. So it's lettuce, got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> red onions, gotcha. Awesome. <laughs> no, Pedro, hey, red onions unique. are spelled with a seven. <laughs> I don't know trigonometry. <laughs> uh, you're a Philistine. <laughs> <laughs> I must warn you, I am susceptible to such flattery. Uh, <laughs> Here you are, boo. <laughs> Steve heard talk of Philistines. <laughs> I've called these people out on their lack of knowledge before. I'm going to join in. <laughs> All right, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> Get that loaded. <laughs> 
<lacht> VLC, non-persistent, Jack, what? <lacht> no, I was just telling the fan that I shall miss it. Oh, I thought much. you said me. I just like... <lacht> Oh, your fan. <laughs> yeah. Not fan. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Steve Husband. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No. We gotta pull that down. Okay. There we go. So we are locked and ready to do a show. Okay. That's in the right spot. So, everything is recording. Yes, it is. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Cut back on monitor to your thing. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, Hello. take a midweek break, and talk about some of the stranger things. I'm going to stick with that Netflix just because I keep winning. Going on in the world of Linux, I'm Ben, that's Jill, and uh, there is Pedro together with you joining us live. You know you're supposed to be working. That's all right. We won't tell on you, man. Um, oh. <laughs> or after the fact. Once new, everyone, we made it through another week. It is still, I think, universally outside of space Australia, where it is cold because that's how they roll in the summertime. It's brutally warm everywhere, isn't it? Especially over here with uh, hitting 35 on Sunday with like 82% humidity. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, you'll die if you go outside weather. <laughs> what do you, what do, you yeah, do with her? It's been thirty five here, um, thirty four, thirty five, thirty two. Um, last when 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 we do a show Saturday at seven thirty wow. p.m. It was thirty one. Wow. Like, at ten p.m. here, it was like, oh, it's twenty nine Celsius still. All right, okay. Oh. <laughs> it was entertaining though because by, by the time of the after show my dslr my web camera uh it had enough man even with an active cooling on it and it's like no <laughs> it started oh. timing out and overheating oh but, boy yes um, <laughs> yeah my fun thing this week is uh high obs project i'm going to talk about you um years ago like more than two years ago i was experimenting with the jack audio with OBS because it added support. I'm like, ah, okay, this is horribly unreliable. It doesn't always record. And when it does record, it goes out of sync. I didn't say a lot about it outside of anytime someone asked me, should I use that? I'm like, absolutely not. Unless you want to lose data. Use Pulse Audio, unfortunately, you know, Pulse Audio Jack Bridge. The main reason is it fails silently. So you will lose all of your audio. If it fails, it gives you no warning. It says nothing to you. And I didn't think anything of it because it was me. Maybe one other person on this blue ball that was using Jack with OBS, but it's, it would be a very handy feature because we're recording, you know, 12 tracks right now. Um, mm. Then I was perusing GitHub and I saw a bug report. And I'm like, oh, somebody else ran into that. And I'm like, oh yeah, here, by the way, it's reproducible. There it is. And I'm like, well, your audio buffer, there's just one line. And that to us, that just says there's an issue on your end. We can do it. It's not a bug. And they closed it. You know what? I'm oh. not even going to fight that battle. All I'm saying, um, all the beautiful, beautiful volunteers that are working the OBS project, you're telling me that failing without informing the user, which will cause data loss, is expected behavior because that's your closed bug right there. That's all I'm saying. You might want to, might want to fix that. But uh, what's new with you, Pedro? Uh, over here, nothing spectacular has been happening. I'm basically bracing myself for the uh, the end of the month, where it's just going to be me doing all oh, of the laptops wow. to send out. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it, it, it's it's it's. <sighs> but yeah, no. The, for me, I got uh, another one of these. Uh, it's, uh, still waiting the, um, 
micro switches because the thing with these uh, Logitech G903s is they're very good mice, when and uh, when people switches, sell them, I, I'm confused because when I say micro switches, I, I just don't envision you desoldering micro switches to replace uh, them. These actually have little plugs. Oh, that you Legos. can unplug from the PCB. Yes. <laughs> I think Logitech kind of expected these to fail. That's why they made them like that. <laughs> they, they must and have been using every other micro anyway. switch they've ever used on any one of their devices in the history of ever as evidence of that. Good on you, Logitech. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, you can actually buy like a pair for pretty cheap on eBay, but I already used the two good ones that I had for this one so for the uh the new second hand one uh I, I had to order two more and they're coming on the very slow boat from china so yeah <laughs> mm. you do. oh boy so tomorrow was fun because i joined in uh tomorrow Wimpy, was Martin. fun How's uh, tomorrow that oh, <laughs> i mean yesterday <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow will Listen, be fun man, yes call me i need to borrow your time machine no, no, i'm just saying yes, just, just a second another time we are old I'll be school. Right back. we're doing that linear time thing so <laughs> okay <laughs> yes i met yesterday uh martin Wimper in wimpress from canonical ubuntu's uh, desktop lead um uh, uh started wimpy's world discord channel which was really cool and a lot of my friends in the linux community are in there so that's been a lot of fun and to talk to wimpy and and talk to all my friends so that's really been cool and it'll really be beneficial beneficial for the community <laughs> be awesome that, that better than you know telegram <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> oh much better I'm, i don't use telegram anymore <laughs> In, in fact, I was telling everyone on there, thank you. Now you have Discord accounts because Telegram drives me up the wall. <laughs> so, And there's still the group. And I was like, nope, don't say IRC. Can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> These Aww. people will always be in existence. I can't reference the exact number of XKCD at this moment, but you know the one I'm talking about. It's a 1,200 something. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> let's start mm -hmm. this week off with good news everyone the biggest kernel ever according to Tor laws so we're talking about um linux 5.8 now the biggest most important change is the addition of uh support for the rme fireface rme fireface ufx and the motu ultralight mk3 i'm just kind of joking i just want to say hey man firewire devices Continue to get added to the awesome. ULSA stack. That's going to be relevant <laughs> for some stuff I'm working on. But I downloaded it. I compiled it. That's how I roll. Uh, NVIDIA drivers do compile against it. That wasn't a problem. However, if you're using black magic hardware, womp womp. So keep that in mind if you're playing the home game. And I'm not going to touch because I know if I patch the drivers like I did last time, the day I finally get everything uploaded and I'm like, hey, look, here's a repository. Blackmagic could go, hey, look, here's our new drivers. So that's not happening again. There are a couple of new things. It's kind of like an AMD uh, love song with 5.8 because mm -hmm. we're getting new AMD energy drivers for the Zen Zen 2 energy sensors. That's good. Renoir and CPU temp monitoring bonus and the ACP audio support, which is good. Also, kind of makes me happy is we now have support for Power 10 architecture. Okay. <laughs> yes. Not that I'm going to be in, hopefully not again, in a situation where I'm going to be dealing with power or anything like that. It's like, that's cool. And, and Power 9, again, Linux had support pretty early on for that. So Power 10, yeah, it's good to see. But I would like more uh, sensors on my X570 motherboard than just the uh, K10 temperature. Ah, uh, yes. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it also has support now for the MediaTek MT8173 chipset used in a lot of ARM Chromebooks. So that's always a good nice. thing. Yes. <laughs> and the support for the Odroid C4. Yay! And the Intel Atom camera driver we've been waiting for that one for a while so that's that's really cool and it, another uh, cool little thing is now you have the ability to swap function and control keys on apple keyboards 
yay and we all rejoice <laughs> that's that's something i've been wanting for a while i don't think anybody's ever like into, uh, apple keyboards are nasty little things they are <laughs> yes, laptop they are. keyboards yeah. for your desktop i've never yeah. looked at an <laughs> apple keyboard and said, oh, I, I, i'd rather like some of that no <laughs> it's like yes they're tiny and they're bluetooth and they're very good bluetooth uh but yeah no if I wanted to type on a really bad uh, keyboard laptop, I yeah. I, I would have asked Slimbook to let me keep that. <laughs> you need to do yeah. what any pure-blooded Linux zealot should do and buy a Microsoft keyboard, like I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, canonical. They got some new hotness. They do. They have yeah. uh, the uh, release candidates for the 2004.1 isos available for download so if you have a machine that you like to test on or your name is matthew commandant you can uh, download yourself some of that uh, early early 2004.1 uh, it's still you know the lts they're basically just wanting to test the isos and make sure everything is up and running and it's good for me, specifically, not that I'm using Ubuntu itself, but KDE Neon is still very much based on 18.04, and if the uh, 2004 base release is going to be anything like last time, now is the time, or about a month from now is about the time that they're going to be thinking about releasing it, so please mm -hmm. do. Although I might have a new SSD uh, by that time, so I might just have to do a fresh install regardless I don't yeah. know man uh, I, can, I, can I just keep running Debian <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> and I know the ISOs are actually dropping tomorrow Thursday August 6th so you don't have too much time to do the testing <laughs> for the final yeah. drop <laughs> but but that's cool too and if you want to do some testing today wimpy has already made um how to test and file bug re reports videos for the 2004 isos so check them and out yes, you to do, see how to do you that you do still need a uh, ubuntu one account for that yes mm. correct <laughs> <laughs> which is why i don't <laughs> I do. <laughs> I've I don't had think one for a long be time. Too much to worry about because you know it's a point release, so yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a big shake. If so. anything, it'll fix a lot of the issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why to look at it. Um, mm -hmm. let's stay on the canonical train because this dropped <laughs> late last week or early uh, on the eighth. All right, Ubuntu Snap Auto updates broke my development setup. He sounds a little angry. There's no way to turn them off. Really? You know what? <laughs> we we got to take, because there's even a table of contents. You know you're mad when you make a table of contents. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say, before we get started, I'd like to point out, like, most of these problems come from the user not understanding how snaps work. But I'll also, in his defense, because I, when I read something like this, I'm like, there has to be, there is. You know, I, I didn't know that you could do a couple of things with Snapset. Uh, oh, and stick around for the feedback section at the end. Pedro, uh, Pedro's long-standing issue seems to be repaired as well. But take it away, Pedro, because I, I, I know you're sitting there just <laughs> warming up your cup of haterade. <laughs> there we go. I mean, Here goes Pedro. <laughs> for my thing, uh, I read the article. It's like, oh, confirmation bias, confirmation bias, confirmation bias. And then I get to the end. It's like, oh, wait, what, 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 wait a second. People are actively blocking snap domains in their hosts file. <laughs> Kudos, Canonical. It took you months to achieve something that it took online advertisers, you know, on the internet, years to accomplish. What You've does managed this basically to boil down to, though? He was trying to set up Cylon, right? Yeah, he. Um, that's what he uses for um, his development environment. It's Sea Lion. So he had that installed and he had everything installed through Snaps. And what he did was he assumed that everything was going to work just fine and eventually all of his plugins stopped working and he couldn't do what 
he basically couldn't continue working on his projects. And um, you, you'd think that one of the main reasons to have containers be the way to distribute software would be to stop that software from um, screwing around with people's um, work environments. Not snaps, apparently. <laughs> you can definitely look at, okay, just on that alone, yeah. I, you can see the benefit for auto updates, though. Yes, very true. <laughs> if you want things to keep working, you probably don't want to be using the latest version, and with snaps out of the box, you don't really have a choice. Tell that to, I, I'm going <laughs> arch users are gonna come find you. <laughs> Yeah, but this is Snaps. This is Ubuntu we're talking about. <laughs> um, to be fair, I mean, the auto updates issue is still being discussed by Snap developers currently. They're like, we should we have it as an option, something. I would definitely go with the option. Um, the, this is what I learned because I like to research this stuff, man. Um, the previous two versions of like the app that you have installed are stored locally. And you can revert them. Uh, you, there's a setting called refresh.retain. And... Just put how many versions that you want to maintain on your local box. Um, I think the big thing is, like, it doesn't matter if you're using snaps or flat packs. You're testing in production. I mean, yeah, exactly. Things are going to break. Just, that has been my big <laughs> issue with both of them. Like, I think they need more time in the oven. But then again. Things need to break before they get fixed, so... With the way Canonical's been promoting snaps, you'd think they were the best thing since sliced bread. Uh -huh. <laughs> Listen, man, it worked for Mir. Jilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, plugins of any app usually get borked with updates. And especially, really, snaps are a rolling release. So this is just... You, you kind of got to know that before you, you start using them. <laughs> So, and, you know, what was interesting in the article, he said that snaps um, updates are worse than the updates on Windows 10. I, I'm sorry, I don't think so. <laughs> For, snaps can be easily removed. Um, you have a choice with snaps uh, not using them, whereas with Windows updates, you usually don't have a choice unless you do a lot of work, <laughs> especially on the desktop end. <laughs> No, uh, you would yeah, install the Windows uh, hack. Yeah, it's called Windows 7. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about <laughs> yeah. Just keep Windows 7. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, more power to the guy for writing a table of contents and stuff like that. But as much as I would love to get on, like, snaps or evil and horror, the guy didn't do this. This is like, just some basic looking around because that took me 20 seconds to find and like yeah uh, he did this one of the things he mentions is the after a refresh the next uh, rec next refresh can be delayed for up to 60 days after which a refresh will be performed regardless of the refresh.hold value but you can always revert back yes until uh, it refreshes after 60 days and then you have to revert back again <laughs> pile <laughs> blocking the domains <laughs> on the host file <laughs> seriously canonical that's stop just stop <laughs> this like it, it, it would genuinely terrify me here like i couldn't hang with anything auto updating because it's like this has to work this has to work and i know this works i know this next version of previous but I don't know, man. And I am too far removed from the desktop experience to even remotely comment on that. But what I can talk about is keyboards because, man, I love blinky, clacky keyboards, man. Can't get enough <laughs> of it. Wake up in the morning, you know, have the keyboard. Now it's not even plugged in. I can just hit it and make noise and annoy people. It's awesome. Oh, no. Ven does not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them trick you. <laughs> so this is uh, System 76. Never heard uh, of them. What do they do? <laughs> oh, boy. They they um, have wonderful uh, Linux-based computers that they make in-house. Um, and they use Pop! OS on those computers. And this is actually... They're, they're working on a new keyboard. 
And this keyboard is not only going to be uh, modular, where you can switch the keys physically around on the keyboard, but also will have a software to help you do so. And um, it's it's also uh, this keyboard is to help with the the new uh, tiling manager features in Pop OS, which are really cool. So there'll be some shortcuts for that. And there's they're they're definitely going to be getting feedback from the community on this on what they would like in a keyboard. And one of their ideas was instead of making the space bar so huge, you know, making it much shorter and then putting the backscape space key next to the space bar. And I think that's, you know, really efficient. And the, you know, <clears throat> System76 has a great track record for innovation. So who knows what they will come up with? <laughs> yeah, see, um... <laughs> You mentioned that uh, space bar and backspace next to each other. <laughs> yeah, see, as someone who uh, biology very much uh, shafted. Ah, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, true. <laughs> right from birth, too. Uh, I like the current uh, layout of keyboards, and I don't think I'm the only one, because all of the custom keyboard layouts that we've seen pop up here and there... Uh, they don't go anywhere. They they end up being very niche markets. They probably have a very dedicated cult following, but it's a niche within a niche within a niche. Especially one developed by System76, at which point you throw in the Linux niche into <laughs> those other niches. Okay, I hope they nail it, and I hope uh, I will eat these words. But yeah, no, my hands... Good luck. <laughs> yeah, not good for Pedro. Well, you know, the, the System76 has such a great track record for innovation and, and you know, making things like, for instance, uh, they're going to make it an open firmware modular keyboard, which, which is really awesome. And like Pedro was, was saying, there is niche keyboards out there that do that. Uh, but I think System76, they can, they can do it. They have you know, the collateral behind them and, and people know the name, um, especially in the Linux world. So I think they can do it. And speaking of uh, unique keyboards, I have one here. This is called the Vortex Core. That's it is one of the, yes, this is one of the <laughs> hardest keyboards to use. It was the, the, I got this about six years ago. It was I can the see very... why. Like, <laughs> oh, look, I hate myself. Let me get something that's hard to type on. Wholly impractical. Things the size yes. of my hand. It, <laughs> it is. It is um, the, the smallest mechanical keyboard ever made, actually. The smallest keyboard, and it's got three layers of controls. So I'm sure System76 is going to make something much easier to use than this thing I'm just, is. I'm just trying to, it's like, I need something that, give, give, me, give me a form factor that's unusable, and I needed to make noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be <laughs> extra loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually got used to using it after a while. That's why you had to while. go dig it out of somewhere. To, yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it sounds perfect. Um, um, it's like, oh, I can use this now, cupboard. Yep. <laughs> So, but Ben should be happy. It isn't blinky, which is nice. I got the non-blinky version. That's because they didn't have RGB at the time. <laughs> You're kind of right, yes. I know I'm right. <laughs> they were just starting the RGB. <laughs> so what I'm thinking about is what everyone's secretly at. System 76. Got to ask a real question. What are going to be my options for the wood trim? Okay. <laughs> Very good. Actual you can also get in red and <laughs> you can get the wood planning paneling in red and blue now too, <laughs> which is really cool. But I've been wanting a Thelio, you know, the for one of the first yeah, open I want a firmware too, Linux but it's machines. For other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> good news, everyone. <laughs> one password for Linux is in development preview. I like this man. Uh, a full featured Linux desktop app. Has been our most requested feature by far and responsible for the longest forum post in our history. And you acted on the long... Do you hear that, Gog? Do you see how that's supposed to work? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Okay, deaf ears. Uh, okay, a couple of things. Uh, this is for testing and validation purposes at the moment. Not suitable for business critical environments. And uh, I know you were thinking. You are probably thinking the same thing I was. Oh, great. Another Electron app. Nope. Incorrect. It's better. Slightly, because it's Rust. So it is completely native. And 
it's got all the support, you know, Max 11 clipboard integration, clearing and all that open network locations, automatic dark mode based on your GTK theme. Nice. <laughs> what about my QT theme? <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, I, personally, okay. I, I prefer my widget sets to be under a non-restrictive license. <laughs> I look forward to the days when uh, KD becomes GTK based. I mean, the K is already there, so they could easily do it. <laughs> it's gonna get the first ones down, man. It's P, that's all you gotta do, right? Yep. It. yep. <laughs> uh, I don't. This is the first. Uh, I mean, I. New one password was a thing. I don't personally use it, but that options there. Do they have like mobile integration and stuff like that? I didn't get a chance to check it out. They completely. have mobile apps. I'm not entirely sure how good the integration is because I don't use it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't either. But it's just. It's just. It's nice to have another um, option under Linux with the software. Yeah, really something cool. to give uh, key pass acts uh, a bit of a and uh, last pass run yeah. for its money. <laughs> I'm I had to throw that in because I was just reading through that, and I know it's just like a password manager, but coming out and saying, "Yeah, a lot of people request this, and you know what? We're going to do it because you want it." <laughs> Amazing how that works, right? So, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that's how it's supposed to work, guys. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're never getting the Galaxy Glide. No, no, sir. <laughs> and I don't have to guess who put this in the notes. Yes. Speaking so, of Electron. Yes. So we've talked about the Electron wrapped Windows 95 that came out in 2018. And now here is Mac OS 8 in all its electron goodness. And this is for the 23rd uh, birthday of Mac OS 8. This was released. And so this is a virtual machine, which is emulating a 1991 Macintosh Quadra 900 with a Motorola CPU. And I actually have one right under my desk right now, but it's a little heavy to get. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, it has all the classic Mac OS apps you're used to, Stuff It, Expander, Movie Player, Simple Text, etc. But it also has demos for all the Adobe products that were around then, including Adobe Premiere 4.01, <laughs> which I used to teach, teach um, years ago. And so it was nice playing with that again. And lots of classic games like uh, Duke Nukem 3D and Dungeons and Dragons. So it's it's really actually really well done. It doesn't have internet support yet, but it does include Netscape Navigator and Internet Exploder. Yes, <laughs> Exploder, <laughs> what we used to call it. But it also has this really nice fe feature, like a lot of VMs do, is where you can share your files easily uh, with the virtual machine and install your own classic apps or bring in files. And um, that's easily done. There's instructions actually on the bottom of the of the screen on how to do that. And you just got to drop them in a folder and uh, reboot, reboot the virtual machine and you can install all your old classic apps. Hmm. So it's nice. really, really, really well done. I was really impressed. That's great. And you can finally you know... donate all of your old hardware now that you're this <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, Electron I... is going to be the end of Jill's hoarding. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> so on on my Quadra below, I have Linux on it, and and it dual boots and Mac OS eight as well. <laughs> so I have Linux on all my things, but I, I sure I to represent the old hardware, I always keep the original OSs on the machines. <laughs> I probably shouldn't mention that uh, El Chipo is technically running as a Hackintosh right now, but <laughs> nice. Wonderful. <laughs> Running Catalina, but yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the closed source proprietary operating system that both of you monsters are running or even allow in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, well, well, I did that just to see if I could. <laughs> see, what you're about to hear right now is called excuses, if you're unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, hey, I am a collector, so I have to have hoarder. the original OSs as well. <laughs> but I make sure, you know, my collection is unique that I get Linux. I try and get Linux running on every machine in here, you know, back from to my old uh, Dex, to my Mac Classic back there. Yeah, I got Linux running on everything. 
it took a lot of work too. Right. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we have up next? <laughs> Gimp. Up next, we have, uh, well, yeah, it's uh, Gimp's own tippy. And you can download, mm-hmm. well, you can uh, donate uh, some of your uh, hard earned monies to help develop the Gimp. And uh, this one is being hosted by Zimarmot. And yeah, basically, they've been uh, helping develop um, GIMP and improve like multi layer tablet, uh, like the drawing tablets, Wayland, flat packs, uh, layer links, and everything else. And if you'd like to tip them, go ahead and do just that. And uh, the one that really stuck out to me because I may or may not have heard uh, Anori say it's like, <laughs> if I unplug the drawing tablet from GIMP to use the mouse for a while and then I plug it back in, it stops working. It's like, yeah, you got to save, close and reopen it again. It's like, that's not cool. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. But hey, it's getting fixed. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, really awesome. And and they're also, um, what's really cool is in their flat pack now, you can use plugins. Yay. Um, that is really awesome. Um, and uh, one of the most popular ones is Gmic, and they've already created um, created the installs for the most popular plugins, which is really wonderful. That's something that was missing with the flat pack version. Hey, I always here's install an native. Idea. If but... you're using something that requires plugins, uh, as I genuinely had half a day <laughs> wasted. Thanks, Pop um, OS <laughs> from System76, because Adore 6 is packaged as a flat pack. And Adore is effectively useless without plugins. Um, be it X42, yeah. CAF, the stack stuff I have running on this screen over here. And we couldn't figure out why the guy could not pick up his LV2 plugins. And fortunately, uh, we have a System76 person in our Discord. So it was like, yo, and he took too long. So Matthew from Lutris was like, yeah, it's a flat pack. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that needs to come with a warning label. Also, please, if, if the software, like, again, don't don't install that as a container. It's just going to lead to headache unless you just need the basic version. This is why, like OBS, man, you show up in the OBS Discord and you're like, hey, I installed this snap. And you're like, it's not supported. Go away. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't like having my time wasted. <laughs> so go ahead and install the native version and make sure to donate to the work of uh, Zay Marmont um, using Patreon or in the above link. And, you know, they're working right now on a 2D animated movie um, using only the GIMP. Doesn't and... have the most adorable four out <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was on their, their update. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> But yeah, so they're working really hard on GIMP development. So go support them. Hmm. They're awesome. And I'm one of their patrons too. I have been since the beginning. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Pedro? No, I was just going to uh, point the uh, comment. You're going to power the through it top. anyway, aren't you? Okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because he's, uh, he's, uh, the uh, person is like, yeah, look, I, I don't want to write this twice. So if you're a French speaker... I'm only going to write this the once. Uh. Feel free to comment in French, and I might reply in French as well. <laughs> Do it in Portuguese, man. <laughs> I don't know if he speaks Portuguese, though. That, that, that's the funny part of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to say it. Yes. Because Microsoft, Microsoft loves <laughs> Linux. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> and in this particular case, Blender. So Microsoft is joining the Blender Foundation's Development Fund as a corporate gold member, giving over $35,000 annually. That's awesome. And, you know, Tom Rosendahl, chairman of the Blender Foundation, he, he had a really good quote in the article. And he states, it's another important signal that the industry migrates to open source and finds ways to contribute to it. Yes, right on. And I think this also really helps prove to the world that Blender is not only one of the top apps used in the film and TV 
industry, but in science projects and AI modeling, which Microsoft is using it for. They're using it to to uh, create um, human figure meshes uh, for AI. And uh, that makes makes sense, as well as Blender is used hugely on Windows, and they want to make sure that it runs really well on the platform. So that's uh, kudos to Microsoft for supporting one of the best 3D animation software out there. Yay. Yeah, and <laughs> Blender is absolutely deserving of the monies, and Microsoft especially lately as far as linux is concerned anyway we're not talking about TikTok in the past or anything else <laughs> uh but lately as far as linux is concerned basically ever since they uh let go of the uh x fat uh patent they're doing all right they're yeah. genuinely doing all right so by all means carry on <laughs> nope um <laughs> This just <laughs> chills me to my bone and bones. I have multiple bones these days. Um, <laughs> it was an upgrade. Check this out. I, I get worried, like, you know, when like something really good happens to you and it's like, well, you know what? The universe has to balance this out. So when's the other shoe going to drop? It, it negates <laughs> the good. You can't enjoy the good because like, I know the bad's coming. Microsoft has a habit of like, when they do something good, they got to do something really old school, mid nineties, Microsofty to compensate for it at some point. It might be buying TikTok. Um, yeah, yeah. TikTok. <laughs> yes. <That's>, <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> That's a can of worms all of its own. And yeah. uh, I, for one, am getting the popcorn ready. Oh. <laughs> hey man, they're going to make it a Windows Phone exclusive app. <laughs> uh, good one. <laughs> the platform is dead, but you can just go to the Windows Store and install it. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Oh man, um, if you think we're great, possibly brilliant, and you want to support what we do and get some stuff back as like a little reward, it's a big thank you for mm -hmm. helping us out because we are completely listener funded and we don't have ads or any all that fun stuff in the podcast. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come hang out with us in our super secret private Discord that basically you just link to. Also, if you uh, sub to us on Twitch, that's where we're at the other six days of the week. But we got a bunch of uh, little perks, access to the show notes, early access to well, how many? We have six levels. Yeah, man. Yeah. Executive Yay. producers, advisor levels. All of those come with curious, fascinating, and perplexing rewards but we do want to thank each and every mm -hmm. one of you who make this possible this is a side project that's completely gotten out of hand and it's brilliant it's your fault too um <laughs> i gotta thank a couple of people this week i do yes you do so where do i want to start uh let, let's go old school because if you pick up anything to prove that you're fiscally irresponsible you end up on the fine upstanding cannibal wall which that's fine. But then, then we have the thing where we'll read out any message that you send us on Amazon, which is a horrible idea. Horrible idea. But we do it anyway, <laughs> because, hey, it's kind of fun, right? Noctilus. Um, I, I had a thing on the studio, which, zone, which was a replacement. Oh, let's get that way over here. For the Elecom Huge, which is the best trackball ever made, period. And they're extremely reasonably priced. They're like 50 bucks. Mm. All Japanese on the box, instruction manual. There's the only English we were able to find was the open tab right here, plus the name. He picked that up as a replacement for my other one. So that's awesome. It works. Thank you. That is kind of brilliant. But a guy who's already on the board, a guy who just wanted to send me a message. Linux New Room. Linux New Room. <laughs> I was talking to Pedro earlier on uh, the pre-show, which you can listen to on Discord if you just want audio only. Um, I respect this. I respect this. <laughs> Th this is near and dear. <laughs> I mean, this really genuinely touched my feeling when, when this show. <laughs> Singular. <laughs> I'm not greedy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> This this is an additional um, fiber optic module, 10 gig, 8, 850 nanometer, for things 
things up now, you enterprising people might say, Vin, don't you need two of those to make that work? Yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> that's why I like this because this is, uh, okay, I need to go buy the other one in the cable so I can do that video. Thank you, Linux Neuro. I respect Yay. that. Um, Yay, Linux Neuro. You, you gave Vin one third of what he needed. <laughs> It's a start. <laughs> it's a poison gift. So. <laughs> it's awesome. I have to read what you wrote. Roses are red and violets are blue. How did Frank die? Was it Carol? From Linux Neuro. Stretching the rhyme a little bit there, but okay. <laughs> awesome, Linux Canero. He's so good with words. <laughs> He's amazing. Peter? <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, I also have uh, someone to thank. Um, and uh, on my end, it was Basil, who got me two things. One of them was this um, little Wi-Fi card, Intel Wi-Fi card, that goes on an AMD-based uh, ASRock A300 Mini, which I don't have either. Um... So while Ven has to buy another one of them and a cable, I need to spend 150 pounds to buy a brand new computer. You see, you but do I will. have to plan ahead a little bit because <laughs> I initially put a... T <laughs> we have a little baby thread ripper and I'm like, oh, I want to play with a new one. So I put up like a TRX 40 motherboard. And I'm like, oh no, don't do that. <laughs> it's like crap yeah. that, that's how i ended up uh having to completely rebuild the uh the steam box when our third got me the 1650 thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no bessel also had a message about the um wifi card and the other item i hope these items go together from basil the other item was a uh ushanka for Nori, uh, which uh, she has uh, put on momentarily for... Um, I think it's a little bit. Know. <laughs> it's so cute. Is that or Nori's <laughs> like, you know what? I like this cap. Why? What do you call it, Nori? I call it, I've had enough Pedro today cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's absolutely fair. And um, she put it on. It's like, does this even look good on me? It's Actually, yes. Yes, it does. So kudos, uh, the Atomic Ass. You got that right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, thank you very much, Basil. Let's get in to a slice of pie. Because this is going to give it to us. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> Starting up first is a, nice pie. a Blinky Pie. This is Harmonize Project. Now, I've seen other products on the market that do just this. What I'm talking about, uh, you, you, you know exactly what that's going to do, right? Let's mm -hmm. click on the YouTube video. So <laughs> if something's going on the TV, it is going to kind of color match with some LEDs on the back. To mood lighting, I mean, taken mm -hmm. to the um, extent. Uh, this is an open source project that you can use a Raspberry Pi. I'm guessing any. Yeah. Well tested on Pi 4B. So... 256 megs of RAM. You don't need to. USB, HDMI capture, a splitter. What about the um, blinky aspect of it? Where does that come in? You plug that as a USB to the Raspberry Pi. Did they just make one? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Ceiling light? Oh, does it just work off regular? Um... Hmm. I don't know, man. I... I just wanted to give this a plug because <laughs> for me, this would be like prank warfare. I would hate to have this if I showed up like one day at my house and like I cut the TV on and it started changing colors. I, I would scream demons <laughs> and just, you know, like, you know what? Nothing a good coat of fire gun fix. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it, Joe? Well, I, I, I think this is really cool. Um, actually, uh, there's a series, um, Razor Chroma uh, light, uh, has a lighting system that works with Philips Hue lights as well, but it's very, very expensive. So yeah. there have been different projects that are trying to emulate that um, much cheaper. And this is one of them. And this looks like one of the best because it's open source and it, it's not just for games as well. It's in anything, any video that's running through the connection. So and that's the big one. It's an open source something that drives yeah. the Philips Hue, which we haven't had up to now. So Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Please, <laughs> more of this. 
I have a Philips Hue light bulb. I bought it to mess with an insect, but that's a story for a different time. <laughs> I guess I'm down with this. Um, I, I I like that it exists because it's one of those things like I would never have that in my house, but I know people who would dig something like that outside of just the Ooh. novelty of it. I would. Mm -hmm. I would. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people do have l not terribly big screens, but uh, like to watch movies in the dark, and you want to ease that eye strain from having the really bright screen and the not lit at all background. This, supposedly, is what the hue and the ambient lighting behind the monitor is meant to help you with. Supposedly. Get, I've seen the demonstrations. <laughs> I've, it's genuinely like... I get it, but that's as far as I can go with it. Like, have yeah, fun ben with does, it. Ben doesn't like the blinky blinkies, <laughs> any of the RGB stuff. <laughs> <He> just... <laughs> yeah, um, that's right up there with like, oh, I like, and dangly keys. Do you like that too? Um, <laughs> no, Pedro, we'll lose you. You'll never come back. <laughs> you know i want to do a cut of the show where you're doing that and it's looped for like 14 minutes oh my <laughs> asmr <laughs> keys one of the cool things you can do with linux um one of the little stories i'm working on is what happened with this audio interface real quick just a little background is mark of the unicorn they released an audio interface and of course we're like hey man we could we take a look at the protocol because Firewire, even though it had a standard, no one used just the base standard it class compliant. One thing you can thank Apple for, your audio interfaces, your sound cards, working on Linux is Apple. And like if it doesn't completely adhere to the standard with USB, you can't install drivers on your iDevice. So what womp. But Motu just straight up like, go away, Linux, any developer, we're not giving you anything. So it got completely reversed engineered in just everything of it. I love this thing because everything works out of the box perfectly. Spite. Spite's a good motivator, isn't it, Pedro? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a point. To <laughs> oh, that story. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah, no, the actual upcoming story is very much um someone who got over buying a smart device uh which then got shut down mm. because the parent company straight up um sold the product to another company and the other company was like no nope, sorry and uh he bought a two thousand dollar flywheel uh home bike which is two thousand dollars <laughs> you might yes. spend two thousand dollars on a smart exercise bike and the server shut down that's the biggest f you of any smart device it's like really that was money down the drain that i just spent <laughs> but you know enterprising person ptx2 uh decided you know what maybe i can make uh the bike work with another fitness app that does the same thing because there are other competing brands and so he loaded up a uh, bluetooth uh, packet capture thing on his mac he started capturing the bluetooth um packets and then testing on the bike what they did which uh packets meant what for the application and then he wrote a little uh shim application that runs on the raspberry pi which captures the um the pi well, it captures the, the bike's inputs and translates that into another app. Uh, in his case, he was using Zwift, I believe. That is the other one. And you can see, like, the um, the life... What, what's it called? Flywheel home bike is now working with Zwift via the Raspberry Pi. Which is amazing. That is actually really, really awesome. And... Yeah, I think if I spent $2,000 on something that turned into a brick, I probably would have done it too. <laughs> that can be a motivator sometimes. Yes. Isn't it? It's like, I yeah. have to make this work. Um, just $2,000. But, 
reading this, <laughs> I, I found that there's like a massively online multiplayer system for like joggers mm -hmm. and bikers that they get yeah. together. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. I, <laughs> that's like their uh, social thing now that they're stuck at home. Right. That That's how they socialize. <laughs> That, 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 that that's neat um yeah spite can be a big what do you think about like products as a service though because i'm i'm just a couple of times i've been thinking about like my security system i have on the house like my ring doorbells and like, when when that goes down they're not terribly useless after, well useful after that yeah they, there needs to be something that is service agnostic or maybe someone who is clever and inventive enough that sets up a generic service that all of those rings and those cameras and those um exercise bikes and even your phone now that there's a bunch of um third-party operating systems for your phone even for that well I mean, it, please. I don't know about something, like, <laughs> something with like video recording stores like that. You can absolutely make it over so open source because you know what? I'm still going to pay you to host it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes. That's how you make money. It's like you create the software open source. People will try it. And it's like, oh, wait a second. I need this, need this to be reliable. <laughs> then you have option B if they go and you can spool up a NAS at home and play the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Well, there is Mycroft and uh, some other services out there. But yeah, like Pedro was saying, getting it all the Internet of Things to be open and, uh, you know, free yes. from... We need more yeah. Internet of Things <laughs> and less Internet of Bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Hardware is a service. <laughs> Hi there, Stadia. GeForce Now. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe some people want to tell us about their hardware as a service plans and ideas, <laughs> yes. man. You you want to sell us on this? Why it's better? How can they do? You that? can. You absolutely can. You can send us your spam emails for your Kickstarter campaign that you might not even start at one point. We got a lot of those. Won't make it. That um, requires reading, and our spam golem will nuke it. So we have to. Read yes. It. Or you can try and describe your idea without you know triggering the spam golem by going to Linux Game What if I try to describe my button. idea using nothing but ASCII art? Oh, very cool. The then. formatting might end up a little bit skewed. Oh, uh, eight equal equals D. No. <laughs> you are a dirty-minded young man. I write the. <laughs> Wait, eight zero zero eight five. I was trying to no? represent a snowman. <laughs> you monster! Oh, <laughs> that's a really tiny snowman. Uh, and I wore spectacles, so I have an excuse. But yeah, the contact form. Just make sure you pick LWDW. That's how you send some uh, feedback our way. <laughs> I'm gonna take this first one. I'm take All right. First one. It's about snips from Predator snips. Eight Bit. <laughs> It's like, yo, this is a Pedro heavy segment. Um, I just wanted to mention that Pedro can finally solve his problem. <laughs> I, I thought this was going to be like multi-chapter, but you no, know, it's just with snaps. Um, <laughs> this, if you're unfamiliar, Pedro will like lock onto something and he'll hang on to it. And it's been the dot folder, the dot snap folder, which I'm like, ah. There is a, no dot. That is my problem. It's just a lowercase folder. It's just called Snap. It's, it's, it's lowercase it's and it's folder. visible. It works like a dot <laughs> folder. It just doesn't have a dot in front of him. And Pedro couldn't hide it. And, well, there's one simple trick, Pedro, to fixing that. Yes, I know about the hidden, and you push the name of the folder, like echo name of the folder, to the dot hidden file in the um, home directory and it works in Nautilus and it works in uh, Dolphin and it works in a bunch of the other file managers as well. The thing is, I don't want to hide it. I don't want it there. And if it is going to be there, at least capitalize the first S. It. Listen, this sometimes Pager just wants something to complain about. <laughs> You gotta realize that. <laughs> so while, while you're doing, like, didn't the bring it up thing. during the show at all. No. 
Yeah, just <laughs> echo um, name of the folder greater than dot hidden. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you can use snaps pager. I'm complaining about it. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just said, I don't want to hide it. I want to see what's on my home folder. Unless it starts with a dot, at which point, if I have to see it, you probably already screwed up. You, wait, <laughs> you hide dot files? What's wrong with you? Because I just <laughs> like to have those folders visible. And if I have to go into, like, dot local or dot config for any reason, again, you've already you done are, goofed. Uh, listen, it snaps. Just close your right <laughs> eye. You won't see it. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> My right eye is the one that can't see very well, so if I close it, I'll probably end up seeing better. <laughs> I'll take my chances. Just give it a try. <laughs> MVMA. That doesn't uh, seem right. It, it's from your bestest buddy, Pedro. What's he got to say? Okay. Uh, it's it's uh, Earl Cameron or Monster Cameron, as we know him. Pedro is wrong again. All right, fine. What did I get wrong this time? iPhones have been using NVMe drives for a few years now. Most high-end, I assume, Android phones you, uh, use UFS3 because NVMe and UFS3 are not the same thing. Uh, and Intel has had several competitive mobile processors, <coughs> with the latest being Lakefield with Intel's first implementation of Big Little. Uh, so, Pedo, please do your research. Or, so your research, sorry, my bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that first point there, you got me. You do. I don't care about iPhones uh, unless I have to deal with them at work for some reason, and that's where it ends. I refuse to pay can we more do than two hundred. Can we? Can we do this? Everybody who's owned an iPhone on the show, raise their hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i know i don't care for them at all um do as i, I say, also refuse children. <laughs> i also refuse to uh pay more than 200 dollars for a phone because it's stupid and if i am going to pay the premium tax yeah at that point i might just buy an iphone that's just not going to happen uh so yeah no that first point you got me Second point, I'm pretty sure I did mention the Big Little architecture last week when we were talking about, like, the phone as a computer or as a processor uh, paradigm, like the convergence thing. I specifically mentioned having, like, four little cores and eight big cores, like Intel is doing with Lakefield, as you brought up. Uh, and I specifically mentioned that in... You're saying that Intel has competitive mobile processors at this point in time when Ryzen is kicking their butts up and down the alley, be it in performance, thermals, uh, energy efficiency. You've done better. You've had better arguments before. That was Come on. Out to you <laughs> in the pre-show. Oh, man. The camera just Ooh. went to sleep. Um, yes. <laughs> I was pointing out to you in the pre-show that uh, Earl won. Yes, yes, yes. See, so you got a reply out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I like, that's why I like Monster Cameron, because he elicits this flair of... Uh, Keep you in check, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> he does, and I appreciate that. Uh, him and Mir, they're very, very, very good at that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which is why I am somewhat disappointed that half of this email was desperate. Personally, like grasping at straws. Personally, I find it cruel that they take advantage of your disability, but I'm not going to judge. <laughs> Beautiful people. We got to get out of here, roll some credits, and thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. Thank you all so very we much. We love you. <laughs> bye bye. See everyone later. Bye, bye Jelly Bean, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the sensors are still there. Do you have to twitch? <laughs> Yay, Romeo said vicious. It's so nice having you back in, in patron as our patron in Discord. <laughs> All right, that's going to run down. I need to switch that to. Uh... Mm -hmm. All right, we'll hang out for about 10 minutes. Let me go uh, mm -hmm. boop this camera back on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> boop, ba -doop, boop, Yeah, boop. I genuinely <laughs> did not know that um, apparently it's from the iPhone 7 uh, and up that they were uh, using NVMe drives. I had Which, read about that... it, but I didn't know what no, what version it was. Yeah, which actually that removes the biggest bottleneck that I mentioned last week, which was the EMMC memory. Because mm. UFS is still really slow flash. Uh, it's good once you get up to speed, but it takes a while if you're doing like teeny tiny small operations, a lot of them in one go, like the uh, random IOPS as it's usually measured. Then, yeah, NVMe is still much faster than that. Much faster. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know a lot of the, the journalists were talking about how fast the new uh, iPhone is, even faster than most Androids, and, and mm -hmm. I can see why. Yeah. Yeah, and it's NVMe, and Apple have been doing a very good job with the ARM architecture that they've been basically doing themselves. From ARM's bases, Correct. they've been developing on yeah. top of that. And the... What's the upcoming one? The A14? Apparently, that particular uh, SOC curbs anything that's out right now. Your Adrenos, your Snapdragons, everything else just... <laughs> So, well, yeah. Maybe maybe Nvidia will take over ARM and then things will change. <laughs> you know, part of me doesn't want Nvidia to take over ARM. The other part of yeah. me is going, wait a second, that is going to um make ARM regret a few things, <laughs> a few decisions in their life. So I kind of want to see them do it. <laughs> Uh, Novadale, the intensity 4K. The intensity uh, pro 4K is actually reasonably well supported. What are we talking uh, about? They're inexpensive on eBay. Novadale is asking about the 4K device that supports Linux, 4K capture device that supports Linux. Do you want 4K or do you want UHD? 4K 60 FPS. <laughs> so you don't want 3840 by 2160. You're talking about <laughs> capture cards. When capture cards. I don't think he means uh, 4096. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Collo uh, colloquial 4K. <laughs> Fake 4K. UHD 60 3040 by 2160. <laughs> um, Blackmagic only makes one card, which I have in this box. It'll do uh, UHD 60. It's not compatible with Threadripper yet. Um, Magewell is... Magewell has one for a single. It's going to run about 600 bucks. That will work. Uh, PCIe by 8. And that's about it if you're coming in over HDMI. If you're going like... A, 6G SDI, 12G SDI, something like that. Uh, there's some other options, but I'm pretty sure that's outside of the scope of your project. Even the mage well yeah. is like $600. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why the um, Black Magic card was very attractive yeah. for <laughs> UHD 60 encoders. Yeah. And if it eventually works correctly with Threadripper, uh, world will be a slightly better place. You know, I didn't need four 4K um, 
encoders, but I wanted four inputs to free up some spots because here's the difference. You know, Blackmagic doesn't make pro hardware. <laughs> they don't. They say they do. They make prosumer hardware. <laughs> There's the reason the... Enthusiast hardware. Hardware. <laughs> they, they got some stuff. Here's the biggest problem. Like there's... Except for their cameras. A different story altogether. <laughs> uh, I, uh, go talk to anybody who owns Red. They'll laugh at you for saying that, Jill. Um, the oh, they make other cameras, too. <laughs> I'm talking about the Blackmagic cameras. Those are, like... There's a reason everyone shoots on Red. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying, is that they, they make awesome cameras. Uh, very prosumer. <laughs> they make prosumer stuff, yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. I have some of their prosumer stuff. Um, to the oh, I thought... Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> the... Can you link a 1080p US? Then that would be one I don't have, so no. <laughs> What, what were you talking about, Jill? You tried to communicate something. Oh, um, we have a red camera at, at work. So mm -hmm. I've had a lot of experience with one. Which one do you have exactly? It was the very first one that came out years ago. Oh, I got I could look it up. Do 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 because they, they sent a they send us stuff actually. I got we got a huge discount on it for school. <sighs> yeah, USB-C, they work. I mean, if you're doing 1080p, anybody who's like, hey, this is a USB-C uh, 304160 by at 60, that's going to be compressed and snotting back to get that over USB 3 connection. Thunderbolt? Okay, you can do it, but... Okay, yeah, this one looks right. The design Cin Cine UR at Samu Pro 12K, the first version of that one, which was 10 grand. That sounds about right. <laughs> if you're going to be streaming, you don't really need anything over 1080p. You know, it's like, I want to do 1440p, mm -hmm. so precisely no one's going to be watching that on Twitch. I don't know yet, Arthur, and I'm sure uh, when I get up and ask Nora, it's like, what you want to eat? Oh. All right, fine. Then I'll spend five minutes staring at the fridge and come up with something. <laughs> mm. I didn't have time to prepare because I was uh, distracted playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this new one is 12K. I didn't even realize. <laughs> wow. Didn't even realize what time it was until Ben's like, so you still alive? Why? What time is it? Oh, crap. <laughs> What's going to be interesting to see the um, Black Magic is released. We were talking about that in the pre pre super shows, unless we get 12K camera a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And that's going to record directly to NVMe drives for reasons obvious. But I think that one's, uh, it's not terribly expensive, but I mean, it's only like 30 grand, 40 grand, something like that, which is ridiculously cheap. But then you get like to your black magic stuff and like until it overheats. Yeah. Until the display <laughs> fails. Like you look at the uh, pocket cinema. There was a great post on um, video engineering the other day of two pocket cinema 6Ks, just the back screens, and they were completely different color temperatures. Brand new out of mm -hmm. the box on default. I mean, there's a reason they're cheap. There's a reason Black Magic Hardware those two, is inexpensive. Those two Asus monitors I had, the white ones, they were like that when I pulled them out of the box. One was purple, the other one was blue. <laughs> it's like, seriously? All right. <laughs> it's all fun in games until you get two right next to each other, isn't it? <laughs> you're like, oh no. <laughs> but I'll give this TN panel a heck of a lot of credit because I turned it on and the colors and the temperature it was very close to this IPS monitor right here. It's like... 
Well, there's a reason they probably cost like 400 pounds brand new, but yeah. <laughs> I got it for 200, so <laughs> I'll take it. These two view sonics were surprisingly color matched. For the price, I just needed them to display a picture, but. <laughs> as long you as know? you're sitting somewhere in like 90% srgb you're gonna be i mean yes playing video games or whatever i mean does it work does it cut on you good don't worry about it most of the time everything is going by so fast you're not really paying attention <laughs> unless the gamma's jacked up <laughs> set it to where you like it What setting do you keep your monitor on, Jill? Uh, well, for doing uh, streaming, the cool, cool settings. Because I have the monitor so close to me, mm -hmm. so close to my eyes. <laughs> that It really helps. But when I'm doing animation, I usually put them on a more vivid or bright setting. But I have a custom custom settings I use, and then I have them color calibrated when I ever, whenever I do animation. And graphics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, uh, because it's TN, and it's like, oh, everything is washed out. Pro tip, brightness at 50, and lower the gamma to like 95, 80%. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Thing yeah, the big, the 43-inch <laughs> one, Ven, I only have it at 10% brightness. Because I'm so close to it. Why do you get it jacked up <laughs> so, so high? Or did you who you're talking to? Well. <laughs> uh, good TN panels is not going to have color issues. TN panels got cheap to make, and cheap manufacturers started just dumping out TN panels. That's why they got such a bad rap. The Sacer TN panel? Great color, as long as you look at it directly ahead. Directly, yes. <laughs> Now, left and right viewing angles, good, but up and down, no. It it turns into like a sheet of gray if you get slightly <laughs> off center access. What? It's impressive how it does it. Which is why <laughs> that one is tilted slightly, like the top is slightly backwards. It's like that on. <laughs> well, I know I'm dooming ourselves for the interruption on Saturday, but... NVIDIA seems to finally have fixed the drivers for this monitor that don't activate the screeching, blaring siren. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Did they acknowledge it? <laughs> Did you go back and look through the notes to see if anyone had like, oh, if it detects this EDID, don't trigger the stolen warning? <laughs> I, mean, I never did that, but early days when we, um, myself, Jordan, and um, Mike T. And MT. Yeah, <laughs> we all bought these monitors because they're 28 UHD, they're like 350 bucks, man. It's like, yes, and now, even now, they're like 700 bucks, but they would give you a genuine heart attack, just like ear piercing, screeching, like, ah, that type, like fire alarm going off. It's the stolen alarm. It's, it's the bug that triggers the stolen alarm. <laughs> I don't know if it's got a stolen alarm on it. I don't know if that's... It a... does, because I remember Googling it at the time and everyone saying, like, yes, that's the stolen alarm. Sometimes it happens, even if it's genuine. But yeah, sometimes that happens. <laughs> Here's my question, then. How do you officially trigger a stolen alarm? Under what conditions would it say, I'm being say stolen? Say you have it on display, like, connected to the um, Kensington lock? Uh-huh. If someone rips the Kensington lock out, mm -hmm. it starts doing that. But it's not occasionally, is the moment you cut it on, it goes pew, wee, wee, wee. <laughs> It seems like I was getting ready to steal something and I didn't plug it. <laughs> yeah, but once you get it to the place or you fence it to someone else and the person sets it up and plugs it in, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a fun setting. 
But yeah, no, uh, it was uh, Acer's implementation of the um, stolen sensor, much like every single motherboard's intrusion detection system. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's a bit flaky. <laughs> Uh, do I have one for an emulator? <laughs> I know that one Arthurian picked up, which was really cool because it's uh, programmable. It's got a learn mode on it. You plug something into it. It's like, learn this e EID. Hmm. Do all yeah, Canadians a lot of the HDMI pass-throughs that I have um, that are powered have EDID emulators in them. If they're, You have to supply extra power to them. It's a block of wood. <laughs> oh, they had like oh, the display a model. display yeah. model oh, okay. that was just wood <laughs> painted to look like the phone. <laughs> I remember asking them in an auto parts store because they had a like area to sell like mobile devices. Like, why are all these like they, they, somebody had went in there and like made brackets to screw in the little empty plastic ones. I'm like, what's going on? Just people were stealing the display empty ones. I think, wow. Ah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we got a bunch the of switch. Like I don't four or five in this setup. I remember plugging the PS4 into the uh, Intensity Pro, and the PS4 going <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to plug it into the monitor, go to uh, the very buried HDCP setting, turn it off, power the console down like fully all the way down, power it back on, go again, the option that shows up below it, turn that off as well, power it down and power it back on, and then you can run it through the um, capture card. Yeah, I just pointed my webcam at it. <laughs> if I did it on the... Um, UHD monitor, it's IPS, and yes, it actually does look all right on camera. This oh, one, no, not no, not, not the monitor, the end of the cable. <laughs> I have to use your imagination a bit, but it works. So if I plug it in and point it at a wall, it acts as a projector, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's so how webcams work. That's the magic. output mode of a webcam. <laughs> Oh, you got the one that strips HDCV, yeah. <laughs> I need one of those. <laughs> just just order a splitter off AliExpress. It's, it's a feature that's built in, man. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to read for it. It's there. <laughs> if, uh, I understand why the PS4 has it, but that needs to be something that's easily, easily disabled these days. I mean, these days there are forum posts because if you go to the official Sony uh, documentation, it says no. <laughs> Gives you all the legal BS. Is this was implemented to comply with the uh, copyrights and what have yous of uh, third party intellectual properties. Are you going to tell me how I can disable it? No? Okay. <laughs> to the other internet we go. <laughs> The other back to the Google you made. <laughs> yeah, <No. laughs> it's like I tried the official um, sanction method. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Dot dot dot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the URL, wasn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that model. <laughs> All right, it's 4.30. Joe, what do you got going on the rest of the day, man? Oh, boy. Uh, 
um, get some get some rest, but then I'm going to go for a walk too. Well, and, you're uh, doing Steve... both at the same time, man. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, the walks are relaxing, anyways. But Steve has been may may came home come home early, which is will be nice. <laughs> nice. Amazon <laughs> CA. What is it? I'm curious. <laughs> Discord, you, you used to do the Amazon links. What happened? You used to be cool, bro. <laughs> Rev son? Rev son. That sounds like something that would strip some uh HDMI. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the that one HDMI splitter that you see with a bunch of different brands on it. <laughs> I got a uh most of ours are it's not this brand, but Whoever made these with this little blue mark on them, it, it's not oh. OERI. I have uh, three different companies with that same little blue mark. Um, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> so cool. All right. So that does 4K, 2K, 30, and 2K, 60, 12 bit. All right. Or the um, Voyi, the ones that uh, sent us some hate mail <laughs> about testing their controllers. <laughs> oh, hit the same controller. Was just, uh... Yep. Yeah. The one that you search for their brand and you don't actually see their brand on the top results, but you see the controllers mm -hmm. because they're the same. <laughs> Dude, uh, check out. Amazon UK real quick. Do a search for like Kingston one terabyte and see if you see a Kingston mm. SS Kingston SSD one terabyte. See if you gotta go through like three other vendors' hard drives in the top search results for you get to Kingston. Kingston A four hundred nine hundred and sixty crucial one terabyte send disk um, <laughs> one terabyte Kingston. How big is this? Uh, ten twenty four so one terabyte. Okay. <laughs> It was the first. But yeah, the first one is a Kingston, oh, okay. but it's the 960. <laughs> I was looking last night, man. I had to get down to like the third. I'm like, what? Or is Kingston gonna? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Let's see, a rectangular oh, region. It, it was the second option on my search. The one terabyte A2000. I guess they didn't it's do their the advertising first, for you. Fourth and fifth mm. <laughs> on mine. <laughs> Not funny. Yeah, mine's the second. The fifth. Hmm. I noticed there wasn't an option in the drop down for like most accurate. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Kingston drives are nice. Um, it, listen, I'm going to say they're nice for what they do. Uh, like, yes. <laughs> all of these boxes the, those, have Kingston um, drives in them. A300s yeah. or V300s. I don't have my uh, Kingston V300 anymore. I gave it away with one of the laptops. Yeah. Um, mostly, I don't miss that character. Uh, that character, that SSD, because it um, because of a corrupt I was character. About to ask, that... Did you put googly eyes on it and like give it a little personality? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. No, no, it was a corrupt character that completely nuked the uh, partition table. It's hmm. like and. That happens how? And I go look online. It's like, oh yeah, that happens sometimes. Oh. There's a. Uh, it had very small internal DRAM. And if it tried to cache something that was slightly bigger instead of failing and doing it in system memory, it would sometimes, occasionally, do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think most people are ever going to have to worry about. Wearing out an SSD. Most of the these consumer grade ones. Where leveling text has gotten too good. Man. Five yeah. petabytes yeah. of writes <laughs> before they wear out. Yeah, good luck Start with that. Slowing down a little bit. <laughs> I mean, plus over prediction. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Peter, you gotta make. Dinner, and Jill. Yes. <laughs> she's gonna go for. A, she's gonna sleepwalk 
There you go. Both of yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Scott, I remember asking Alan uh, what was wrong with my OCZ uh, Agility 3, 60 gig, when it died. <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, the controller is bricked. I'm like, seriously? There's nothing I can do? No. Oh, there's okay. something you can do. You can buy a new one. And <laughs> if you get really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> HP SSDs. I mean, I got these Kingston 128 gigs when they were like 20 bucks a pop. Now you can get a 256 gig for like 25 bucks. So, I mean, they're disposable. I just bought them to lower you power usage, less heat. Like really good um, QLC SSDs. These Micron ones. Oh, Microns are always good. Stupid yeah. cheap. <laughs> they're QLC, obviously. But yeah, this one is a, um, a 240 gigabyte, 10 pounds on eBay. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be truthful to the viewers. It's no fatty dove. <laughs> it's no fatty dove. No. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, after uh, Linus, uh, the Canadian Linus, the, that were video, no they fatty disappeared. Doves, right? <laughs> Like months before that, we not weren't we, we just ran across it during a pre-show, just doing Google searches of uh, well, yeah. Amazon. We're like, what is this? We thought it was hilarious. Should have bought one. Yeah, yeah. if we'd bought one like right then and there, <laughs> probably could have flipped it for a profit. <laughs> That's not how that works, unfortunately. Not for us. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I gotta go make a podcast. Bye, everyone. Uh, Yay. <laughs>